Hello again, so in this video we're going to be talking about the synthesis of isocyanogen tetraazide from isocyanogen tetrabromide because when we left last video we had a small amount oh how many, how many milligrams about 300 odd uh, milligrams of isocyanogen tetrabromide but now we're all about how do we convert that to the isocyanogen tetraazide at this point I've already done it actually I've actually just finished the main channel video so if you want to see how the properties of the final explosives are then I recommend watching that video. I made a video on every other single step in this process and I thought it was a bit of a shame to miss out on some more of the detailed synthetic discussion because I can't really fit that into the main channel video. So that's what this is here. All we have to do is react isocyanogen tetrabromide with sodium azide. Seems easy enough, but the catch is I didn't actually know how sensitive the final product was going to be. We had some very loose instructions, but we had no idea what kind of monster we would possibly make in this process, or even if the synthesis was gonna work at all. The important thing is we did this on a small scale and we took things very slowly. Also, if you ever wondered what's up with this wall, it's actually a Patreon perk if you um, donate, you can request something to be drawn on the wall. So someone said, my love of chemistry and my little pony, I think was a request. Um, that is a self portrait, by the way. I got requested to draw a self portrait. So that's, that's that one there. Anyway, okay, on with the video. So here it is, it weighs in at a enormous 360 milligrams. We only actually need 100 milligrams for the next step. The one catch, of course, is that it's very brown. There is obviously quite a bit of free bromine in it. You can see it's staining the paper in some spots. So I'm really going to have to clean this up. I reckon a very small amount of thiosulfate should neutralize any bromine and leave the tetrabromide especially if only a little bit is used because the bromide is going to react very rapidly with it. Here's a match head for scale, so it's not tiny, it's not super tiny, but... I'm adding a tiny bit of distilled water to it. Yeah, it's, it's not going to dissolve, but you should see the yellow colour of the solution from the bromine kind of getting pulled into it. Yeah, and you, and you can see that solution is yellow there, right? A little tiny bit of sodium thiosulfate is up next. Now I'm going to pull off the thiosulfate solution above the solid. And I'll give it a wash with some distilled water. Beautiful. All right, acetone. Dissolves beautifully. And at this point, I've actually changed my mind. I've decided this is too big a scale for the very first time. This procedure makes 42 milligrams. That was the yield that Engager got. And that's nearly 50, and 50 milligrams is a lot of explosives. 42 is still a lot of very sensitive explosives. So if we halve it, we're looking at probably 15 to 20 milligrams. And that's a much nicer first procedure. Now we have to cool it down to zero degrees. And we've got a nice bath all the way down here. So we'll put it in that one there. This here is my sodium azide. I made it oh, years ago now, and it's really been waiting for this moment. I did make some lead azide at some point, but it blows up, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of not that interesting. <laughs> it's in a big jar labeled toxic, and I'm not really a fan of working with it. I mean, I could do some interesting things with it. Azide is a very useful chemical in both inorganic and organic chemistry. I mean, inorganic chemistry with azide is purely explosives basically, but super toxic. It's one of the most toxic chemicals I have here and probably the one of the easiest chemicals to poison myself with. You know, white phosphorus is more toxic than sodium azide. It's probably the only chemical that's more toxic than sodium azide that I have, but it's kind of hard to poison yourself with white phosphorus unless you lather your skin in it, you know, eat it or try and perform a magic trick with it or something like that. Whereas sodium azide forms clear, colorless, tasteless solutions and it gets absorbed through your skin and blah, blah, blah. It's quite, it's quite bad, you know. I don't have cyanides and I don't really like working with azides too much. So it's remained in this jar for a very long time. Actually, speaking of which, I should open it outside because there's a chance if you store it for a long period of time and, and this is homemade sodium azide, so, you know, hydrogen azide builds up in the container so I'm just going to definitely open it outside and just let it vent for a couple of minutes before bringing it back inside that's a it's a good thought I just had we only need for this one 40 45 grams of sorry not 45 grams 45 milligrams of the sodium azide so not very much I 
Now we only want a really tiny amount of water in this. Sodium azide is very soluble, so I think about a third of a mil. Now we get to turn our attention back to our bad boy tetrabromide in the acetone in the ice bath here. Still all dissolved, so let's just go ahead and add our azide solution. Actually, you might cool down our azide solution first, just briefly. Now, the synthesis we're following advises to stir it with uh, nitrogen blowing through it. I don't have that kind of setup very easy. I mean, I could suppose I could blow oxygen from my brand new oxygen cylinder through it, but I won't do that. I'm just going to stir it, and then and then we're going to play the waning game. We're just going to stir it around with a pipette, and hopefully this early stage it doesn't all blow up. Okay, it's been in the ice bath for probably 40 minutes, so now I'm just taking it out, and I'll let it warm up to room temperature. All right, nothing has precipitated out in the hour or so it's been sitting here at room temperature. We wouldn't expect things to precipitate out. It's mostly acetone, and we know our product is soluble in acetone. So now the next step is to add a bit over two mils of water, cold water. Hopefully we see something precipitate out here, and hopefully it's our product, not our, our starting material. <laughs> Oh, absolutely beautiful. So beautiful. All right, now we're going to put in ice and um, see if we can get some crystals at the bottom which we can collect. Yes! Yes! Holy shit! I've actually done it! Well, fuck me dead. Can't believe this has actually fucking worked. I am beyond excited. This is really, really cool. However, it is a bit annoying because the, the solid doesn't really want to settle in, in the water there. Because ideally it would settle and then I can kind of pet off the crystals and do it all without having to filter it. But I, I believe we're going to have to do a filtration step. The problem with the filtration step is then I have to get the explosive off of the filter paper. And that's the worst part. You know, if I can keep it in suspension all the time, then it's a lot easier to handle than having a solid on a bit of paper that I then have to scrape off. Like, that's that's an awful part of <laughs> the synthesis. So the solution there has come through perfectly clear, so our solid is in the filter paper in there. Alright, it looks like there's really not enough to be able to scrape off this filter paper, which is a bit of a shame. But further down the line, we can definitely scale it up and get a little bit more. This is just the first initial test to see just how bad it is. So I'm trying again and the difference being this time I used a lot less acetone initially. We're scaling up so we're do doing double the concentration but I kept the amount of acetone the same. So th and when we added the solution of water we can see it's not actually all mixed. Tetrabromide is precipitated out. If I stir it around just a little, see that at the bottom there? I'm just going to have to add it. Acetone drop wise until everything is one nice uniform solution. Alright, uh, the stuff is precipitated out now. It's actually phase separated the acetone and the sodium azide solution. This didn't happen last time. Maybe I made the azide concentration higher this time. I think I did too. Sodium azide is very insoluble in acetone and the tetrabromide is very insoluble in the water. So it's not surprising that they phase separate. It's just surprising it didn't happen last time. Phase separation makes stirring a lot more important. So I might have to find a way to try and do that because um, when they're like this, they don't react at all because the tetrabromide's just in the top layer and not really going to react so much with the sodium azide in the bottom layer. All right, so the pump's doing its best to be kind of a little gentle, I suppose. But uh, at this rate of bubbling, while it's great stirring, it's also really going to evaporate off that acetone in no time at all. So I'm mean, kind of feeding it a little bit of acetone to plenish the stocks, but it does look like a little bit has... Stuff has precipitated out, so you might start giving it like 50% water, 50% acetone, just to try and keep everything soluble, including our product, because we don't want our product all crystallizing out at this stage. I believe I believe that product down the bottom is sodium azide. Uh, I can't be certain. I think the acetone ratio is a bit too high for the solubility of the sodium azide. However, it might be our product. So uh, yeah, just got to be careful. <laughs> Very careful. Right, I have a, a bad feeling that this crystalline product down the bottom is actually our tetraazide, it's not undissolved sodium azide. You know, it's good, lots of product, bad, you know, our product is a horribly sensitive explosive and they look like big crystals. So, you know, 
One way easily we can test it is if I get a little bit of those crystals out and add them to some water if they dissolve. Very easily they're sodium azide because that sodium azide has quite a high solubility. And if they don't, it's our tetraazide. And that'll be good to wash them anyway, so we really have to add them to water. So um, we'll see about that. Amazing. It doesn't all dissolve, therefore it is the tetraazide. Amazing, amazing, I'm terrified. Alright, so this is some of the presumed tetraazide that's taken out of the water washing suspension. So I haven't dried it, but um, they've been washed free of sodium azide. Let's give this a bit of a heat. I might put a match next to it for comparison. Yes! Alright, so I've got a tiny amount of the explosive on the foil here, and why this is significant is it's actually been over six weeks since it was first synthesized. Yes, it took me that long to get the video together from the first time I synthesized some, to editing, to everything like that. The video is still not out, so it could still be another, it could be at least seven weeks <laughs> between synthesizing and getting the video out. Anyway, I kept some because I did want to see how the sample kept. You know, like does it decompose over time? Does it spontaneously blow up on its own? It's been kept in the dark, I've had, you know, a cover over it, but it's been kept just in the shed temperature and the shed temperature over the last six weeks has varied from close to zero up to 50 odd degrees in this shed. It hasn't been a nice climate controlled room or anything like that. It's been very wild. But now we get to have a look at the crystals under the microscope. Check they're still energetic. The crystals also look perfectly fine. They look a bit more brown but they haven't like broken up or anything or done anything weird you'd expect from something that was really decomposing into nitrogen say because if it was you'd see all the crystals like broken up like really fractured and everything like that but no we don't see any of that yeah see there's still huge crystals in there just like there was before so apart from a slight browning i, I see no evidence that this compound isn't perfectly stable at room temperature <laughs> yeah good as ever beautiful I forget how fucking loud that is. Holy shit, that's loud. Additionally, I've got a tiny amount of these crystals in suspension, and that's been stable across the six weeks too. I'm very pleased that we managed to get here. So thanks for all the help from the comments from all the time. I have roughly two milligrams of the compound left that I'll keep. So if you have any really particular tests for me to do with it, I can. Very small scale, of course, still should be okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you in another video soonish. Bye.